Good morning and welcome to worship. Today's worship is the final portion of the American folk tale, The Three Trees. We learned last week that the first tree was made into a manger and the second into a fishing boat. As we complete the story, we learn how the final tree is used. Is her simple desire to point to heaven realized? Let's find out. One Friday morning, the third tree was startled when her beams were yanked from the forgotten woodpile. She flinched as she was carried through an angry, jeering crowd. She shuddered when soldiers nailed a man's hands to her. She felt ugly and harsh and cruel. But on Sunday morning, when the sun rose and the earth trembled with joy beneath her, the third tree knew that God's love had changed everything. It had made the first tree beautiful. It had made the second tree strong. And every time people thought of the third tree, they would think of God. That was, being, that was better than being the tallest tree in the world. And now I will read to you the um, last verses of Luke chapter 23. As they led Jesus away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made, it care and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The woman who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. 
I invite you to turn in your hymnal to hymn number 530. Hear, O Lord, your servants gather. Hymn number 530. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day ro rise again? And then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. We gather now at the font. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. So let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnal to hymn number 367. Now all the vault of heaven resounds. Hymn number 367.
Our scripture reading for today is a portion of Psalm 118. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I invite you to turn in your hymn book to hymn number 389, Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing, hymn number 389. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One summer, a friend of mine worked in a lumber yard to earn money for college. Recently, he told me a story about a man who worked in the yard full time with him. The man who worked full time, his name was Ole Olson. My friend said this, Ole had a quiet wisdom that comes from experience. He never moved very fast. He was slow and deliberate. There was one time, however, when I did see Ole move fast. A huge wooden beam, 12 inches thick, had fallen off one of the yard trucks and was blocking traffic. As a result, none of the trucks could move and Ole quickly became impatient. Now he could have yelled at one of us to get a forklift and move it, but instead he just walked over to this huge beam groaned and lifted one end of it to his shoulders and dragged it out of the way. We were in awe. You could see the sweat beat up on his forehead as he slowly moved that huge beam to the side. There was wood on his back. A man who didn't like the way things were put his back to the wood and in doing so, he changed things. Let me say that again. There was wood on his back. A man who didn't like the way things were put his back to the wood, and in doing so, he changed things. We come today to the final portion of the American folk tale, The Three Trees. And today we heard what we have suspected from the very beginning, that the third tree was shaped into the beams of a cross, and that cross was the very one upon which our Lord Jesus was hung. There was wood on his back. A man who didn't like the way things were put his back to the wood, and in so doing, he changed things. 
2,000 years ago, so much was going wrong in the world. God's people were trying their best to uphold the law of Moses, but doing so had caused them to overlook the greater mandate, which was to communicate God's love for all people to all people. And as a result of their intense religious practice and passion for adhering to the law, many people were de deemed unworthy of a place among God's people and were not allowed to worship. But then along came a man who didn't like the way things were, who put his back to the wood and in doing so changed things. God sent Jesus to reconnect all the lost with God. God sent Jesus to reconnect us with God. God sent Jesus to renew the relationship with all those who felt separated from God. And God sent Jesus to renew and strengthen our relationship with God because we often have a sense of separation from God just like people did 2,000 years ago. God and Jesus didn't like the way things were and put his back to the wood. By doing so, he changed things for us forever. When the women went to the tomb on the first day of the week, they went assuming that Jesus was still dead. There is little doubt that they loved him and that they felt it their bounden duty to care for his body as a final act of love. Never did they expect that, they, that the body would be gone. Never did they expect that they would hear why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. With these words, the entire world is turned upside down. With these words, the expectations and assumption of the women and of us are no longer valid. It's no longer true that when one dies, that's it. It's over. No. Because Jesus lives, we too have the hope of the resurrection for ourselves. And when we receive the news that the wood that was on Jesus' back has been cast aside, it gives us space to rejoice and to look to the future with hope and anticipation. John Dalrymple, in, in his book, Living the Richness of the Cross, wrote the following. The suffering and death of Jesus Christ his passion and cross stand at the center of the Christian religion. The life of Jesus of Nazareth provided many graphic symbols, each of which might have been taken as the distinguishing sign of his movement. Good shepherd, bread of life, light of the world, lamb of God, resurrection, transfiguration. None of these became the Christian sign. Instead, the cross is the sign of Jesus' suffering and death, and was accepted everywhere as the official mark of Christianity. The cross is the central symbol of Christianity, and it permeates our culture. Jesus put the wood on his back to show us the lengths that God would go to so as to restore relationship between humanity and God. Jesus put the wood to his back to show us that we are loved. We celebrate the saving action of Jesus when we gather to worship, but we celebrate most especially when we look at a big, rough, wooden cross like this one and remember that Jesus put the wood to his back. In doing so, he changed things for us and for all humanity forever. Amen.
I invite you to confess your faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's spend a little time in prayer now. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work of churches in this community, and especially St. Luke's Lutheran in Goodhue as they welcome their new pastor, and St. Mary's Catholic Church in Belchester. Strengthen our ecumenical partnerships. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, flood, storms, or pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death. Shape new paths toward peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors. Guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police toward laws that protect the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit. We ask for your healing touch to be upon David Broin, Janice Eckhoff, Jerry McRae, Ben Norman, Jesse Otto, Mike Schwendeman, Scott Sorensen, Linda Thompson, and Max Tilderquist. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O oh God, and give work to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and keep Jenny Hedin, Jesse Bignall, Laura Gruber, Carson Lind, Trayton Lind, Melissa Parent Stanky, and Steve Lindstrom, who celebrate birthdays this week. Be with them in their going out and their coming in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving Herb Narrison and all the others who have died in faith. As you equip them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. When he'd given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Give us the courage to follow in the footsteps of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you share your communion portions, remember that this is the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Our musical interlude is hymn number 376, Thine is the Glory, hymn number 376. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, be with you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our musical interlude is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, hymn number 377. Some announcements. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Thank you also to Tom Erickson, who is playing for us on the first Sunday of each month for the next few months. 
The deadline for the community dinner sign-up has been extended until Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. It's not because of a lack of interest, but because of the challenges of having the event so quickly after the Labor Day weekend. We continue to have Tuesday morning coffee. The gathering is small and may provide an opportunity for you to get out and see a friend or two with appropriate social distancing. We gather for Wednesday evening worship each week, and it is also a small group set setting. Typically, we have a conversation about the scripture lesson for the next Sunday, and that provides all of us with an opportunity for new learning. We are going to have Wednesday evening worship at about 7 p.m. on Wednesday after the community dinner. The bulletin addresses the ad... The, the bulletin includes the address for Lutheran Disaster Response. If you are being nudged by the Holy Spirit to send financial support to assist with the derecho cleanup in Iowa, the hurricane cleanup in, in uh, Louisiana, or the recovery from fires out west, Lutheran Disaster Response is a very reliable place that you may send a gift to. We complete, conclude our worship with a blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.